welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to be taking you through a complex question on earth geometry, recapping all of the different concepts we've learned looking at distance on the earth. And this is aimed at students right across Australia from Queensland all the way across to Western Australia and down to Tasmania. This particular question has been taken from the Queensland Community Mock Paper that was developed by a range of teachers across Queensland in 2020 and it's question number seven. Two cargo planes are scheduled to fly from Melbourne to Singapore. Plane one will depart from Melbourne and fly directly north then travel west to arrive at its destination. Plane two will depart at the same time but will fly directly west before turning north to arrive in Singapore. Both planes can fly at 850 kilometers an hour, so same speed, when fully loaded with cargo. And we need to use mathematical procedures to determine which cargo plane will arrive in Singapore first and evaluate the reasonableness of our solution. Well, there's a lot in this particular question. It may seem a little bit simple at first glance, but I think the place to always start is to draw a picture. So we're going to start by drawing the equator and also the prime meridian. These are really good places to start because all of our longitude and latitude lines will be in relation to these. So firstly, let's position Melbourne on the map. Melbourne is south of the equator and east of the prime meridian. So we've tucked it all the way over there on the right. And Singapore is just north of the equator, one degrees north, and between the prime meridian and Melbourne. Now it doesn't need to be to scale, we just need to pop those different points in so that we can get a bit of an idea of what we're doing. Now that we've got this in here, we can look at where plane one's going to fly directly north and then turn and fly in a westerly direction. Plane two is going to start by flying in that westerly direction and fly north. Now at first glance you might be thinking, well if they're flying at the same speed, surely they're going to arrive at the same time. And that's the first thought that I had. However, it's important to note that the two northerly legs that both of those planes have flown are going to be the same length because they're both on lines of longitude, great circles. And therefore, they are both the same length because all our longitude lines are the same length. However, these two legs, the two westerly legs, are going to be different lengths. In fact, Singapore is only one degree north of the equator, so it's quite close in length to a great circle. However, Melbourne's a lot further south, 37 degrees south, and therefore, as the further you get south towards your poles or north towards your poles, those small circles get smaller. So in fact, that journey that it's taking from Melbourne to Singapore on plane two is actually gonna be the shorter journey. So that's a good thing for us to understand when we get started. We're looking and expecting a smaller distance between Melbourne and Singapore for plane two versus plane one. That can be part of our evaluation of the reasonableness of our solutions when we get to the end. So it's always good to draw a picture and have a bit of an idea of what that looks like on a globe. Okay, so I've moved that a little bit to the left and we can do our calculations on the right. We're gonna start with the northern bound parts of both journeys because this is the part that both journeys have in common and they are both the same length. So we're going to work out firstly, what's the difference in latitude that the plane from Melbourne is flying to get up to the latitude of Singapore? Well, when it's at Melbourne, it's 37.8 degrees south of the equator, plus that one degree north that it travels past the equator to get to Singapore gives us a difference in our latitudes of 38.81 degrees, and this is our angular difference. Now we need to choose our formula from our formula sheet, and this is the one where we have that common lat longitude, so we're going to work out that angular difference, which is 38.81, and we're going to multiply that by 111.2 kilometers. And we work out that the distance that they're traveling on that northern bound leg is 4,315.672 kilometers. Now you might be wondering, why have I rounded that to three decimal places there? Well, that will be more important later on. We do our final rounding at the very end. We try not to round in between. Now let's work out the next part. This is our top part that the plane is flying in that westerly direction. Remember what I said before, it's going to be longer than the part from plane two. So we're going to work out those difference in the longitudes this time that it's traveling. It's 114.96 where Melbourne is, take away 103 where Singapore is, both of them are east. And we've got a 41.96 degree difference. So now we're traveling on the same line of latitude and that means we use the formula with the cosine of theta in it. And cosine of theta is that common latitude that they both have, which is going to be one degree. So then if we substitute in there that angular difference of 41.96 and multiply that by 111.2 cosine of one, 
we get a total distance for plane 1 of 4665 in that westerly direction. Of course we need to add the two together and we'll get to that in a moment. We're now going to work out leg 3 which is the westerly direction that plane 2 travels between Melbourne to get to that same line of longitude that Singapore's on. So once again our difference in longitudes here is 144.96 minus 103 degrees and that gives us 41.96 degrees. So we're going to multiply that by cosine of 37.81, that's that common latitude that they have and we end up with 3,686 kilometers. See, I told you so, it is shorter. So now we need to add that information together. So let's add leg, leg one and leg two for plane one, and we get 8,980 kilometers. And for plane two, leg three and leg one gives us 8,001.998 kilometers. So we can see in total that we've saved 980 kilometers by going uh, west first and then north. So let's now recall, because we need to work out who's going to get there first, not just, we know, well, we know it's going to be plane two who's going to get there first, but we should be giving how much by. So we're going to recall that distance divided by um, time gives us our speed and so on. So we've used that since grade eight. So hopefully you've remembered that one, because you will get sometimes questions with speed and time. Okay, so if we recall that time is equal to distance divided by speed, well, then I take my 8,980 and I divide it by that common speed of 850 kilometers an hour. I know plane one's going to take 10.57 hours. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that's 10 hours and 57 minutes. It's not. It's 0.57 of an hour, which is a lot closer to a half an hour than it is to another hour. So we take that 0.57 and multiply it by 60 and we get 34 minutes. We do the same thing with plane two. Same formula, we're going to divide its distance by 850 and we get 9.41 hours and we take that 0.41 and multiply it by 60 minutes and we get 9 hours and 25 minutes. So we can really see now that plane 2 is definitely going to get there a lot faster. In fact, it's going to get there an hour and 9 minutes faster. Now, we've done a lot of mathematical working so far, but we haven't really evaluated the reasonableness of our solution, which is what the question's asking us to do as well. So we need to think about, and this would be, could be where you could explain that plane two is traveling on a, um, a smaller, small circle because it's closer to the pole than plane one, which is traveling on a one degree north, which is almost as long as the equator is itself. So it's a much bigger circle. You could also say it's reasonable because you've just worked out mathematically that plane two is traveling a distance that's approximately 970 kilometers shorter, which is almost the distance between Sydney and Melbourne. So it's definitely going to get there first. Well, that's all we have time for in this video today. I've got one more complex question coming your way and do look out for that. And the best way to find out is if you hit that notifications button and you'll know exactly when it's ready. And do please like and follow us on Facebook and you'll hear more information there about things that are coming up as well as some fun tidbits. Have a great day.